Father, this morning we pray, Lord, that we be edified in your scripture. And Father, that you show us how to, show us how to overcome hate, Father, and that we apply it to our everyday life. Father, please forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, and thanks we give. Amen. All right, overcoming hate. Last week, uh, we dealt with, you know, we started out with the nature of hate, which was the characteristics of hate, which meant if you harbored hate in your heart, you were still in an unregenerate state or what we would say unconverted. Uh, hatred is among the works of the flesh. Hatred is evidence of spiritual immaturity. So we dealt with the nature of hate. And then last week, we dealt with uh, hate leads to many other evils. As far as uh, hate stirs up trouble, hate generates envy, and envy generates hate. Hate leads to murder and assassination. Uh, hate leads to sins of the tongue. And hate leads to bitterness, resentment, and retaliation. And then we looked at some of the consequences of hate. And I want to go over this again because some of the... Uh, the quoted uh, text in here just makes, it gives us a, a visual of how bad hate could be, not just holding it in your heart, but how bad it can be for you personally. Uh, you know, hate will rob you of your happiness. You know, as long as you hate, you will be miserable. Hate and hell, they dwell in the same heart. If I was going to knock on the door of the most miserable, miserable man in town, uh, I would know exactly where to go. I need to go to the door of the bitter, resentful, and the unforgiving uh, hater. Uh, hate will make you a slave. And th this, this is, and I, and I teach this to the children. I say, if I can make you emotional, I can control you. And hate is the same way. Because what does hate, what kind of emotions does hate bring? You know, I'm going to give you an example, and, I, and I'm going to talk about my daughter here, my, 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 my baby, they live in Texas. When she was uh, uh, young, she, it was still in like junior high and high school, she was slick. She could get you. For example, I remember one time that we went up to the school because, you know, they had a, a disciplinary issue. Now, what had happened was, is my daughter wasn't in trouble. It was the other girl that was in trouble. But if you delve into what actually happened, uh, the girl didn't like my daughter. My daughter didn't like the girl. Well, the, the girl, her, the way her emotions were, she would always show it outwardly. But my daughter would always stay reserved. She was scheming. So what she would do was, is she knew that she figured out the, the buttons to press to make that girl act in all kind of different ways. So she would wait till uh, adults were around or administration was around and she would start pressing those buttons. But she would do it subtly. And what do you know? The girl would respond how she normally did. So now, when the adults are looking at this, what do they see? They see one person that looks like they're in control of themselves and, and acting reserved, and they see one person acting a fool. So who do they, so who do they want to discipline? You see how she manipulated her? That's how hate, that, I'm, I'm telling you, if a person can control your emotions, they can control you. For his, and, and like this says, hate will make you a slave. Somebody said, hate somebody and you become his slave. You know, that's a hard statement. You know, hold up, I hate somebody. I'm, 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 I'm hating them because I want to get back at them, but I'm actually coming under their control. You know, it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but listen. They control your thoughts. They invade your dreams. They absorb your creativity, and, and, and they determine your appetite. They affect your digestion. You know, when you're really mad at somebody, you, you, you ain't hungry. 
I can show. I, can, I know that to be a fact. If my wife mad at me, heck, I might not eat. But, <laughs> but, she, she, but you see, it can control how it, it can control your digestion. Uh, let me see. It robs you of your peace of mind and your goodwill. You can't even be nice to the people that you love because you're too busy being mad. You know, and, and then, and what happens, just show you how this trickles down. And then what happens, if I'm, if I'm already mad at somebody, and then I come around somebody that I love, I start examining what they're doing. They ain't acting any differently. But all of a sudden, I start seeing little things behind the scenes. Well, what are they really, how do they really feel? You see, it affects your mind and, and your relationships with other people. Uh... It, can, it, it, it takes away your ple the pleasure of your work. It ruins your religion and it hounds you wherever you go. You cannot get away from the person that you hate, even if they're not around. It is with you when you are awake. It invades your privacy when you eat. It's a, it is close beside you when you're driving your car. You know, if, if, if you're taking your time and you're driving, ain't no big deal. Somebody get a little too close to you, uh, hit their brakes a little too hard in front of you, uh, uh, get over in your lane and, and, and you know, uh, a little too close. You know, if, you, if you're in your right mind, you know, you'll look at that. You, you, it, might, it might startle you. It might upset you a little bit, but you get over that quick. You keep driving. But if you hating somebody and you running around mad all the time, y'all see these crazy road rage incidents? You know, and it seems like everybody in America got a gun now. So, so it ain't just people arguing anymore. People out here killing each other over not turning on a blinker. Imagine that. Anyway, but hate can, get, can eat you away, eat you alive so bad. To where it'll make that it'll make that seem like a reasonable option. You know, it changes how you look at the world. Uh, it influence even the tone of your voice when you speak to your boss, your wife, or your children. You know, I've I've been I've, I may have come home from work sometime and been upset about something that happened, and my wife asked me something, and I answer her. Now, in my mind. I'm answering her normally like I normally would. But you, but, but women, boy, y'all pick up on a tone. <laughs> and she'll look, she'll make a look at me and be like, well, what's wrong with you? I'd be like, oh, my bad. My bad. You, it affects even how you talk to people. It, it requires you to take medicine for indigestion. You know, heartburn, you know, headaches. You know, the loss of energy. You know, it, it steals your vitality. It, it, it steals your last moments of consciousness before you even go to sleep. If you want to be a slave to somebody, find some person that you hate. Hate will harm you physically. Physically. Men sometimes think that it pays to hate. Later they learn that they must pay for the hate. You know, that hate, that hate got that boomerang effect. You know, you throwing it out, be careful, that thing come back to you. You know, uh, in this book, none of these diseases, Dr. S.I. McMillan, McMillan speaks of jealousy, envy, self-centeredness, ambition, frustration, rage, resentment, and hatred as disease-producing emotions. You know, just think about it. Just think, just think about it in this aspect. When you lose somebody that you love, you know, your heart's sick. How many times do we see uh, older married couples that have been married for a, a long time, and one of them, one of them passes? And then it seems like within a month or two, the other one passes. You see, emotions, they're, 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 they're strong. They affect us physically. 
Now, when in his book, he states that uh, uh, in regards to the disease-producing emotions, he states that they are concerned with protect, protecting and coddling the self and can be summarized under one title, self-centeredness. You know, it seems in the world today, we got a problem. The world has a problem with the word accountability. You know, we, we, we're so self-centered, you know, sometimes so narcissistic that we can't even understand that the problems that are in our lives, we're causing. Instead, everything is already, is always somebody else's fault. You know, we got to be able to look in the mirror and confront ourselves. You know, the Bible even says that uh, reading the word is like a man looking in a mirror and then walking away and forgetting what he saw. You don't even remember what you look like. And you just looked at yourself. We got, I'm telling you, and, and it says, well, when you're so concerned with protecting and coddling yourself, you're basically you're a self-centered person. The doctor also says what a person eats is not as, in, as important as the bitter spirit the hates and the feelings of guilt that eat at that person, okay? You can eat all the healthy food you want, but if you don't have a healthy mind and a healthy heart, you're still going to have medical issues. Uh, uh, and he says, what a person eats is not as important as the bitter spirit that hates the feelings of guilt that eat at him. A dose of baking soda in the stomach. Now, this is old school. A dose of baking, let's show you how old this book is. A, a, a dose of baking soda in the stomach will never, will never treat the disease producing factors of envy, self centeredness, resentment, hatred, and immorality. But it strikes at the cause with an effective and curative manner. Those who belong to Christ, this is how you do it have crucified their old nature with all that it loved and lusted for. Now with this in mind, let us remember that we are forbidden to harm and defile the body. The body is a temple. God won't hate in his temple. I can guarantee you that no. The answer is no. Hate results in spiritual suicide. You ain't got to worry about somebody else uh, uh, affecting your your faith, you do it to yourself. Hate is a gun that breaks at the breach and kills the hater. It's like a, a, I got a gun, an old gun, and I fire the bullet. Well, the chamber's blocked. The gun doesn't work properly. It blows up in my hand. Now, I was trying to hit somebody else, but now I'm, 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 I'm minus a hand. You know, that, that's how hate does. When the honeybee drives his barb into the flesh and embeds it so firmly that the only way to escape is to leave the stinger behind. Y'all do know that when bees sting people, they die soon after. Okay? That's like hate. You think you're getting at them when you're really harming yourself. Even to death sometimes. However, in so doing, sure death results. Now, so when we sting others with our actions of hate, we are not only hurting the victim, but such will also result in our spiritual death. In making the most of life from A to Z, Leroy Brownlow states, in the little village where I grew up as a, cust uh, grew, up, grew up, it was customary for voluntary workers to dig the graves for the deceased. I recall as we completed a grave, one man looked into it and said, I wish they would bury me today. Actually, he had died, already died on the inside years before. Hate had killed him. Bitterness and rancor, restlessness and misery were his life. They go together. If you're hating somebody, and that's the emotion that you harbor in your heart, you're killing yourself. Not just physically at some point, but spiritually. A person that hates somebody, do you think they can forgive the person they hate while they're hating them? Is that a commandment for us to forgive? Why? Because God forgave us. God forgave us. Go ahead, Diane.
No, no, no. What we discussed at the beginning when we started a couple of weeks ago is we are the hate the sin, but not the sinner. Okay? And to give you an example of how easily that's done, look at yourself. I can only speak for me. There's some things I've done in my life that, that I look back now and I hate I did that. I hate I acted like that. You know, to the point to where you look at yourself and you be like, I can't believe I did that. But do I, but do I still feed myself? I put clothes on this morning, got up and took a shower. You know, I did things to myself to show that I loved myself. That I wanted to take care of myself. It doesn't mean that there are some things that I've done in my life that I hate I did. So, when you're, so if, you're, if you're wondering how to hate the sin and not the sinner, you do it to yourself every day. You know, even if somebody directly attacks me, and I'm not talking about, it doesn't have to be just physical. You know, verbally, whatever, you know, scheming, conniving, whatever it may be. You know, I'm training myself. You know, to, to, to be able to have empathy. Because in my mind, I didn't, go, I didn't go home with them. I didn't wake up with them. I didn't eat with them. I didn't have that type of fellowship with them. So in my mind goes to what happened to them to cause them to act like this? You know, that helps, me, that helps me separate how they're acting from them. And I've mentioned before, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I work at a car dealership. I'm the internet sales manager. I take, uh, if you do anything online, it comes through my department. If you call into the dealership, it comes through my department. And I've gotten calls sometimes. <clears throat> I'm in the sales side. I've gotten calls sometimes for a person looking for our service department. Well, they're not looking to make an appointment. They're looking for them to complain because they've had some fix. They spent some money uh, and the problem came back up in a short period of time. Or they want their vehicle. They're calling back there and nobody's answering the phone and they need their vehicle and they go off on me. I mean, and, 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 and like I said, I worked collections years ago, but I did that for 10 years. Now, I've been called every name in the book, but a child of God. But what I used to always, when I managed, I would, I would, this is one thing I would do. I would take a, a fishing hook and I would glue it to a piece of paper and I would set it on every one of my associates' desks. And I would tell them, don't let them hook you. And, and, and what I meant by that is, they want to talk about everything else but the obligation. So they'll say anything. They'll throw out anything. They'll tell you anything. To get you off of why you called. Now I'm saying that to say this. We got to stay focused. Don't let them throw you off your pathway to the Lord. You know because people will try Christians. Especially if they know you won. They want to see how far they can push you. What kind of buttons they can push. But we got to remember. We're always showing them Christ. You know, don't, don't show them that old person that you got rid of. You know, that they try to, that, hey, just because you got rid of them don't mean they don't try to rear their ugly head sometimes. But we got to, don't get, as Christians, we cannot get hooked. Don't let them hook you. Stay focused on the Lord. Keep that the type of conversation that comes out of your mouth. Because we know one thing from Brother Harris' lessons. If you give the devil some script, he getting out of Dodge. And I, you know, this happened last week. I bought your lessons. Woo, they be so good. <laughs> last week, last week, and I messed with some of those. Now, these are people that I know. I've been, I've been at Fletcher 10 years. So I've known some of these guys at least that long. And we're friends. So, you know, I mess with them sometimes, but uh, last week, a person asked me a biblical question. Now, we're standing in the pre-owned building, and I start answering the biblical question and, and giving examples. Okay, well, this is how that looks, 
And one of my friends was act like he wanted to come say something to me, and he turned around and left. I said, come on now. I looked at him. I said, come back over here. I said, you know the only person that leaves when you give them scripture? I said, the devil. I said, so come on over here, because apparently you need to hear it. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, you can flip those things. You don't have to let your emotions get out of control. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. Look at Jesus. They tried to set him up. They tried to, to undermine him. They, they slandered him. They did all of that. Did it stop him from telling, him, telling the people about the good news? It never did. It never did. And, and those who direct the sauce, can you imagine being the focus of attention wherever you go? Wherever you go. Now, some people may love you, but you, I guarantee you, you're going to have some people that hate you. But you got to keep your focus. So how do we, so, so my next question is, what's the opposite of hate? Love. So how do we overcome hate? Love. And that's what we're going to talk about. All right. Uh, with the Bible writers, there is no middle ground between love and hate. It is, it is either hate or love. Uh, go to uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. For the, for the sake of time, I'm going to read the scripture. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes." Didn't we just talk about how, how hate can blind you from being able, it can blind you in your dealings with your family, you know, your coworkers, you know, just the general public. If you hating, the Bible clearly says if you hating, you walking around blind. And not just hating on anybody, hating on your brother, your sister. How can you say that you love God and hate a the people of God. How can you say you love God and hate the word of God? These are things that we should love. We should love. Now, uh, the next scripture is uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. We're in the same book. And it says, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Because, get this, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Look how strong that text is, especially verse 14. It says, we know that we are passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. You don't have eternal life in you. It's associating you not loving your brother with death. It's associating you not loving your brother with blindness. You're in darkness. You're associated with death. You know, that's, that's the opposite of eternal life. And, and, and it says you, have, you do not have eternal life abiding in you if you hate your brother. Look, we all make mistakes. The Bible even gives us a, a blueprint on how to deal when we do offend each other. Don't go spreading the business out to everybody trying to get up a posse. We sometimes act like we want to we wanna go to the person with, with, with torches and pitchforks and have a whole crowd behind us that I done told about everything you did. But I didn't tell them anything I did. 
we got to make sure that we deal with this in a constructive manner. In a constructive manner. And next, uh, go to Luke chapter 9, verse 50. And Jesus said unto them, forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Okay? His love is the only protective or preventative or cure available for hate. You can't say apathy is a cure for hate. Well, I just don't care. You should care. You know, we, we sometimes act like, well, I don't hate him. I just don't care about him at all. If that's your brother or your sister, you're supposed to. You're supposed to love them. We don't go around here avoiding each other, giving each other the silent treatment. Mm -mm. We stay connected. You know, 1 Corinthians talks about divisions. How do you think those things start? Factions. Cliques. Well, let me, I got news for you. We all in the same clique. Thus, to overcome hate, we must instill and plant and nurture love in our hearts. Get, get what it said. We must instill. We must implant. But you also have to nurture. Okay? Love in your hearts. I didn't say it was easy. Go ahead, Brother Settles. You can't expect unsaved people to act saved. So that's always been, and I rethink that. And uh, but uh, in time, I sort of I get the services, but the attitude in which the people have toward you, whether it's the color of my skin, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's the way I I, I dress. Mm. Uh, it's all kinds of different things that people put you in these boxes that they hate you because uh, they fail in areas, areas that you may be succeeding in. And uh, so they treat you in such a way that, uh, you know, they, it seems like they hate you. Well, yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. You know, uh, a person may not like you. Uh, it could be the color of your skin. It could be how you dress. It could be what you got. You know, we talked about hate brings envy, envy brings hate. You know, if, uh, and Brother Sellers, I kind of know the situation that you're talking about, because then you talk. And, and, and no, they did not do you properly. Yes, sir. You know, especially for the investment that you were making. But, we, we what's, the, what's the Lord's prayer? We forgive, Lord forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who have trespassed or are indebted to me. Because ultimately what we have to, the way we have to look at that, well one of the ways, is that whatever the issue is, it's only dealing with something material. You know, now, they, and, and I can't make a person love me. I can't make a person respect me. The only thing I can do the only person I have any control over is me. So the only thing that I can do is do what I know the Lord would make me do, would, would want me to do. Because my ultimate goal is for them to see my good works. And when they talk about good works, it, it, it could be your good attitude as well. You know, to see my good works and to glorify my Father, which is in heaven. I mentioned one time, like when I was talking about the... Uh, 
the people that are calling in and be upset at the service department and, and give me an earful. Well, if I respond negatively at the time that they're telling me that, how is that conversation going to go? It ain't going to be but two people arguing with each other. And I remember something Brother Thomas Jackson said in one of his uh, lessons one time. He said, when you see two people arguing, that's two weak people. You know, it takes strength. Remember, we, we told our children, hey, hey, it takes strength to walk away. It takes strength not to feed into the negative emotions that you're receiving. And, and when I'm on the phone with that person, I'm going to keep it professional. I love the Lord. I know, and in my mind, you know what, it, what I go to? They don't personally know me. They've never met me in life. They don't know me enough to hate me. You see what I'm saying? And so I, I maintain a pleasant demeanor. And I can tell you more times than not, by the end of that conversation, that person is apologizing to me. Amen. They're saying, man, I know that this is not your fault and, 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 and I, I shouldn't have said what I said. I shouldn't have went off on you like that. I realize that you're trying to help me, man. That's, that's really not me. I apologize. Do you understand? That's why when, when, you, when, when we say hate, uh, love can overcome hate, it can. I'm going to give you another example. Let's say that I worked at a company to where the receptionist, uh, I'm black, she's white, and she may have some racist tendencies. Now every morning when I come in, I speak to everybody. Good morning, good morning. I speak to everybody. That is my modus operandi, my standard procedure. Now, everybody speaks back except for her. She always frowns, never says a word. I do this consistently. About a year goes by. I'm doing the same, I'm the same way. Next thing you know, whenever I say good morning, that woman can't help but smile. I didn't have to confront her. I didn't have to call her on the carpet about how she was acting. I just had to keep following the Lord. And next thing you know, it it it, it a chip away at that. And and you know what she'll start she'll start saying and saying, well, he doesn't act like what I was told they act like. You know, he's he's a nice guy. I've never seen him without a smile. He always got a great attitude. Hmm. Maybe I need to look at him a little differently. Folks, love can overcome hate. It can. The importance and the necessity of love. Brotherly love is a badge of discipleship. We're in the same book, John 13, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 35. Well, no, we gotta go. We were just in Luke. John chapter 13, verse 35. The Gospel of John. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If, if, if ye have love one to another. In Jesus' words. Jesus says, how are men going to know, how are people going to know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another? Not just in word, but in deed. Uh, brotherly love is to be maintained above all things. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. I'm just going to keep on, we're just going to keep talking scripture to the time right now. And it says, and above all these things have fervent charity or love among yourselves. For charity or love shall cover the multitude of sins. Didn't love cover our sins? Love on the cross covered our sins. And it says, and above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. You know, you can love somebody out of sin sometimes. You can. Just keep at it. 
If they're doing something that you know is contrary to the will of God and they know it, but they have an issue with it, keep loving them. Because guess what? If you, if, you, if you cut off that connection, then what connection do you have to help? You got to maintain that. Love. Brotherly love is the second greatest commandment. Matthew chapter 22, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 34. And that says, that reads, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. Brotherly love, brotherly love will prevent you from stumbling. 1 John chapter 2 verse 10. And we read this before. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. You know when we start to stumble? When we start to get away from each other? Because being around my brothers and sisters are, are going to do nothing but, but pump encouragement into me. They're going to they're gonna pump the word into me. They're going to build me up. They're going to edify me. They're going to give me some peace. You know, and, and, and then and versus if I go out into work to the world, it's going to criticize me. It's going to uh, uh, put unreasonable standards on me. It's going to beat me down, you know. But, but so the, the word is telling us to love each other and to stay close to each other because the world is going to do the opposite. Okay? And we can, we have problems in the church sometimes with this to where uh, someone may have a doctrinal issue. Well, instead of speaking to them in love, we speak to them like they should have already known that. You know, I can't believe that you, you, that you don't know this, that, 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 that your faith is not that strong, strong enough to, to understand this principle. You know, we got to love each other. We got to love each other. In word and in deed. It just can't be lip service. You understand? Brother, the love is the mark of true conversion. 1 John chapter 3 verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Without brotherly love, one is convicted as a murderer. 1 John chapter 3 verse 15, and we've read that. If you hate your brother, you're worse than a murderer. One must love his brother because God first loved him. 1 John chapter 4 verse 11. And that reads, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. These are mystical texts. These tell us what it is. Uh, all right. I got three minutes. All right. Practical suggestions, practical suggestions for overcoming hate. Vardaman Forrester, in his track called, uh, called Overcoming Hate with Love, it gives the following suggestions. Pray for the person who is the object of the hate. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. If you're praying for somebody, it will be difficult to continue to hate that person 
whose name that you're constantly mentioning before the throne of grace. And listen to me. That does, it, it, you may be rewarded in the relationship, you may not. But that, the, but God, it's, it's just like the, the scripture where, where the Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father. It didn't give any stipulations on how they had to act. It told me what, I, what I'm supposed to do. It may, not, it may not help the relationship, but do what you're supposed to do. God sees. God sees. Find something good to do for the person who is resented. Brother Forrester states, a compliment, a note of encouragement, a Christmas greeting card, inviting the other person's child to a party, offering to carry someone or deliver a package somewhere, some good deed will make a dent in a critical attitude and will start destroying the hate. Remember my example about I came in every day and I said good morning and, and she never spoke? Well, over time, I wore her down. I didn't beat her down. It's a difference. I wore her down with love. I didn't, I didn't beat her up. I wore her down. Just because you love somebody this minute don't mean they're going to hating you, stop hating you the next. may take time. You might have to wear them down. But keep loving them. Try sincerely to understand the person who is disliked and resented. To know all, now this isn't the Bible, this is a human proverb. To know all is to forgive all. It's a good proverb to remember. If you walked in the shoes of others, our attitude toward other people would drastically change. If a person is, is out of pocket and they're acting uh, 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 indignant to you, they're, 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 they're being, just being a mean person, love on them. You don't know what's going on. You don't know if this morning they got evicted out of their place. You don't know if this morning their child broke their arm. You, we don't know what goes on. But, and, and, and social media is a poison in this aspect. It only shows you the good things going on in people's lives. So, we are, so, so it seems like humanity is, is, is developing a concept that everything is going good for everybody. But it's not. Even those people that are showing you all the good things, it's not. I've seen too many times. Where rich people, famous people, influencers, you read, the next story you read about them is that they died. And then it's determined that the cause of death was suicide. I'm going to tell you, they, they still walking around with a hole in them. Don't believe the hype. We have to have empathy. Sympathy is just saying I'm sorry. Empathy is being able to walk, take a walk in their shoes. And if you have that mindset, Guess how your interactions with that person will be? Is everything okay? Is everything going good? Is, is, is something happen? It may give you an opportunity to build a relationship. And if you have an opportunity to build a relationship, guess what relationship you can show them? The relationship that you have with the Lord. I'm done, Bill. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for giving us another opportunity, Father, for you to shine a light in our life. Father, for you to show us the, the negative and the, 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 the hurt and the harm that hate causes. But Father, for you to show us the redemption and the, the, the light of love. Father, help us on this journey. Help us, Lord, to put your word in our heart, Father, so that we can love each other fervently, Father, and that we can truly learn to love the person but still hate the sin. Because, Lord, we know that you want all men to repent and to turn to you, Father. And, Father, who are we to deny that? Help us, Lord, to always show Christ. Not in just our words, but in our deeds. And Father, give us an opportunity to form the type of relationships that let us show people Christ fully. 
We want to bring more souls to your father. Your, your love is the only thing that can overcome the hate in this world. Please forgive us of our sins, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.